Jeff Simon here again for Social Flight on our Titan T51D Mustang build. And today we are going to install this Comant Comdat CI2680-200 combination GPS and VHF radio antenna. And this is such a cool antenna. I absolutely love this because, you know, when you're building a, a, certainly a replica aircraft, you want to keep your antennas to a minimum. Every little thing sticking up there takes away from the vintage look of this Mustang. And so we really want to minimize that. In addition to it, you really don't have a lot of space for antennas on top. And so the idea that we can uh, combine our very sensitive GPS and antenna that we're going to need for navigation with our VHF comm antenna in this one unit from comment uh, is fantastic and it's going to look great on the turtle deck when we go and we get this thing installed. So now Jake of course will be doing much of the installation on this one but I wanted to get started with just a few basics. First of all uh, as I mentioned this is a combination antenna pretty rare and a, a real feat of engineering because a GPS antenna is incredibly sensitive uh, very very uh, uh, a subtle uh, a signal that comes in for GPS. It's, it's weak. It is nothing compared to the signal when you're transmitting. You push that push to talk button and you start transmitting outside this antenna. And so the idea that they were able to combine this without blocking out your GPS when you're transmitting is a, a feat of engineering that I don't totally understand. But it works, which is fantastic, because usually you really have to spread out where your uh, comm antenna is going to be and where your GPS receiver antenna is going to be. Now, a quick tour of this. On the bottom, we have four mounting points, and then we also have the two connectors here that are uh, very uh, basic. They go to a coax cable. And um, We'll be using very high quality uh, coax for doing this. It's incredibly important to do that. We're not wiring a coax today, so when we actually get to that stage, I'll tell you more about the process of wiring your antennas in in a future installment. Um, another note that I'd like to do, and this one really gets into some crazy math uh, for us, which we don't usually do here on Social Flight, and that's talking about ground planes. When you are dealing with antennas, ground planes are incredibly important. Uh, it's a big factor in the physics of how antennas work. Now, the math I talked about is a little thing I'll go over here for a minute there. It's pretty complicated. It actually came to me uh, in, in how it was explained to me from the folks over at Comment Antennas. And a big shout out to Ryan Deck for passing that along and helping out with uh, my understanding of how these antennas work. Now, the, what's very important is to make sure you have an adequately sa sized ground plane for this antenna. Now, an aircraft like this, it's all metal. We're going to a, a metal structure. That's important. It's going to give us, uh, I think, plenty of ground plane. But if you're dealing with something that's either a fabric aircraft or composite, it becomes very important about how are you're going to size that uh, ground plane for the antenna that you've got. And it's measured radially outward from your mounting point. So what's the radius of this kind of circular ground plane that you're attached to? And it's surprisingly large in what is required. So here comes the math. This is the formula of what's required. You need one quarter of the wavelength in terms of length radially outward for the lowest frequency that the antenna is going to use. So in this case, uh, since GPS is a very high frequency, uh, for the low frequency here, we are talking about 108, 108 megahertz, which is the low frequency that we're going to use on this comm antenna. Now, the formula is you take the speed of light, okay, 300 megameters per second, you divide that by the wave, by the uh, frequency, uh, of the antenna, 108 in this case, and that gives you one wavelength. In that case, you do the math, 300 divided by 108, you get 2.778 uh, meters uh, uh, is the distance of this uh, radio ground plane. Divide that by four, you get 0.695, and 0.695 of a meter is what we actually need to go out radially. Uh, on uh, our antenna ground plane. And then lastly, it is very important that you size your doubler, the doubler being under the skin, that gives you additional strength so that your antenna is stable in all directions. Very, very stable. That's important to do as part of your installation as well. Make sure it's all well grounded, got a ground plane, 
and gets uh, mounted properly. Follow all the instructions, of course, that come with your antenna. And then now I'm going to turn it over to Jake and we'll get started with the antenna installation on our T51D Mustang build. Okay, so I'm here uh, getting ready to uh, install this Comant GPS and COM antenna. I'm using the installation instructions given by Comant. There's the diagram that I'm using to figure out where the holes should go for both the connectors uh, and the screws that hold the antenna to the aircraft. This is the turtle deck on here and is what we're going to be mounting the screws through. But on the bottom, we're actually putting a doubler, which is going to have a line of rivets through the center. And then we're going to be using the same glue that holds the side skins together uh, for that uh, uh, doubler. So it should be a really, really strong structure, especially because we've got a lot of leverage since this is a very long antenna. And once we get that in, uh, it should be fun. Okay, so we made this doubler out of uh, 032 aluminum. We're gonna, this is gonna go on the bottom side. It's gonna have a center line of rivets and then it's going to be uh, uh, attached using that same glue that we use with the side skin. So we're gonna put this in place and then uh, drill down. Yeah, that's the back. Okay, so I learned a little lesson here. I was able to uh, properly place the holes in the turtle deck for the antenna, but then when we put the doubler on, the holes weren't there. So I'm gonna have to uh, match as best as I can, especially for the bigger holes, um, into that uh, doubler and see if I can get it to line up as uh, well as possible.
All right, so Jake did most of the work on this, and um, thanks so much to Cobham and Comment Antennas for uh, providing this. I'll tell you, it's, it's a cool antenna. I mean, yeah. GPS and VHF all in one. Mm -hmm. That saves holes and supports and everything else. Um, and it looks really uh, close to what the original Mustang looked like with the straight up antenna in the back. Yeah. Which yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah, the axe handle, they called it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it looks really cool. It took a few iterations for us to get this right in terms mm -hmm. of a doubler. We thought that uh, that first piece that Jake made that would go long and have like some ears would, would really give us strength. Um, but the reality is it's the lateral strength that it needs and this skin is only 0.016 so it's really thin and we need to double it up with um, at least for this portion of it with 032 and that made a big difference mm -hmm. definitely wow all right well so another stage of building done on our t51d mustang until next time i'm jeff simon this is jake simon be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free social flight mobile apps for apple and android devices just go check it out completely free tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations hundred dollar hamburgers so many things and if you're staying home of course you've got online events as well and every tuesday night social flight live just check out social flight live one word socialflightlive.com until next time we will see you blue skies